Well, anyway, uh, folks, my name is Tony Nelson, Charles Anthony, uh, formally, but uh, the Anthony, I was named after a character on the radio back in the 40s, <laughs> named Anthony Marleybone. So, so that's uh, that's where Tony came from, and I'm stuck with it anyway. Uh, I'm here because I'm old. <laughs> I've lived a long time, and this is my cousin, Robert Allerton, and he has and uh, done a lot of research on the, our family and, and the history of Crown King and, and all of that, and mines and all. We have a common ancestor, uh, George P. Harrington, who was responsible for uh, really, he was a shaker and a mover. He, he, he was responsible for a lot of the mines and, and railroads, but we'll talk about that. And my friend, old friend here, Ron Lips, we've known each other for a long, long time. He's going to have a few words to do. And he's a, he's a great storyteller. So I want to get uh, Rob, if we can, uh, the Petra list. <coughs> Structure. 
So it's reasonable to assume that they migrated up from the lower country down there in the desert. Uh, uh, the example would be uh, Perry Mesa and Black Mesa out where Sunset Point is on that. Those mesas were big villages there. And in Turkey Creek and so forth. And that they migrated up in when it got hot down there, just like people do today, come up to the mountains and cool off, and they hunt it, and they have their hunting camps, and all of that. So, uh, you know, they, the game was plentiful, I'm sure, up here. The later culture was the, around, mainly over on this side of the mountain, and the, you know, is uh, the, the Yavapais, which being interpreted means sons of the hill people. The term Apache was a term used to cover many different types. There's the White Mountain Apaches, the Mescalero Apaches, the Yavapai Apaches, so it's a catch-all term. But these were the Yavapai Indians here. The first I, let me let me just do one thing here. I want to read my, my great aunt, Helen Carrington Sweet, wrote about them. She was a little girl here in 1895. And I want to read this part to you that she wrote. Bands of Indians came into the Bradshaw Basin as late as 1895. All of the American Indians were not put on the reservation. They were here. They were in Turkey Creek. We know that. And they were up at the Spud Ranch here where Bill Cullip lives. Thus overlapping the coming of the European settlers, not settlers by many years, riding into camp on horseback, they were an elaborate, were elaborate buckskin moccasins. But when they got on off the horses, they went barefooted so they could save their moccasins. Thus saving wear and tear on them. And I recall one of my earliest memories was with the, the efforts of a brave and his wife to persuade my mother to trade a pair of new red shoes for anything that they might have. I don't think that happens. <laughs> but anyway, uh, I, I mention this because right here where the Bear Creek, Creek cabins was, was a big camp. There was a big camp and a lot of, of uh, a lot of uh, broken pottery and charts and, and things like that and, and chips where they make their arrowheads and so forth. And uh, all over the mountains, anywhere there was a creek, because they had to have water, and you can find, still find traces of them if you look very closely. So anyway, that's, that's, that was the first people that were here in these mountains. And so we see the petroglyphs and the Oomatate, you can look at that a little later. The first prospectors. Can we do uh, uh, Kentuck? Go right for the gold. <coughs> the first prospectors were probably <laughs> of Spanish words. Then explorers like the Walker Party came in to Prescott, and uh, a party came in from California. People were, or Pauline Weaver, who was, was uh, over in the Weaver Mountains, strange over, and Ed Peck, who discovered the Peck, the Peck Mine, which is now above the Swastika Silver Mine. And uh, the first recorded mining claims was the Del Pasco located in 1863 by a man named California Jackson. And then the eclipse, which A.C. Luke 
developed the batteries up on the road to horse street, which is a saddle up there, we call Luke's, Luke's Divide. Uh, he, his relative was Frank Luke Jr. that was the balloon buster, and his statue was down by the Capitol in World War I. There, then the famous Tiger Mine, Silver Mine, and people, when it was discovered, people flocked into the area from California, especially, and they established the first town, Ratchel City, which was from the Senator, went clear over the mountain, and down into the Tiger Mine. And there was a store there, they built a store there. And uh, at one time, my great aunt writes, there were 1,500 people lived there. And 2,500 got the mail there, who knows? There was a post office finally established. We see the remains of where they lived. They built the walls out of the rock, the rock. There was no song in those days. No way to get lumber except by hand, making the lumber by hand, foot saw. And so they made the rock walls and the fireplace, and they used what they called a tent top. So they called them tent houses back in those days. In 1887, Noah Schickles and Warren Place, who had been prominent in Bradshaw City, located the Crown King Mine. I want to talk about this gentleman here. Down on Humboldt Creek, to the south of us, this man they called Kentuck. And the baby probably was uh, Charlie Morgan. Charlie Morgan. And he, he passed away down there and in the Depression times. And I knew a man that lived here and told me that he found him and he took and took his body and buried him in a plaster hole where he'd been digging for plaster rock and covered him up. Later on, there was a tombstone. But the tombstone was up on a hill, quite a ways from where he was actually buried. And the tombstone, it was a nice one, and it read, Captain William Bell, 35th Kentucky Rifles. So he was a veteran of the Civil War. Anyway, I, I know real close to where he is actually remains so, are. But uh, I, I think somebody went and took that tombstone away, but it was there. So we know who he was. Kentuck, they called him. Kentuck, and I believe, I'm not sure about this, but Pusty, but Kentuck Springs over in Horse Street was named after him, and he was just like the idiots and somebody would come up in the high country to get out of the heat. So, there's an example of one of the old prospectors. At any rate, back in the day of the Crown King mine, uh, they, Shekels in place who had located it, were in Prescott. And they bumped into my great grandfather, George P. Harrington. So we can get him up there. He was a banker from Illinois. And he was familiar with mining populations because his family, his father, had been killed in California at the gold rush and was in the hydraulic passers uh, and I'm, you might let Robbie talk about this a little bit. Uh, you want to say a little bit about that, Roger? Uh, sorry. Um, so, George P., a young man in Springfield, Illinois, um, signed up for the Civil War. Um, 
I'm not an expert on the history, but I'll say most of these enlistments were 90 days. Uh, you as a young person would sign up uh, to join a particular group and go fight the war, and it was a 90-day enlistment. You, you, you were in, 90 days, you were out. Um, I don't know how many of these did. In our family, we have his papers from us. But he discharged at the end of the war, and a big, big fan of everybody in Illinois was of Abraham Lincoln. Uh, he somehow made it to uh, Taylorville, Illinois, where he met his soon-to-be wife, and they courted, uh, only to find that his soon-to-be wife was rich. <laughs> um, there was a couple of families in the Taylorville, Illinois area uh, that had been in the Spanish-American War and had gotten large land grants because of their service. And that land grants included coal and waterways and canals. And, and, and so these two families were developing housing and, and they're very industrious. They own coal mines, they own an electric generating plant, these kinds of things. Um, they set the young man up into uh, banking. And the next town over, one train stop away, about 12 miles, is a, uh, a town, um, I'm not going to say this, Edinburgh, I think is the house. Edinburgh. Edinburgh.